London. We present to you this evening's main entertainment. In one corner, an underpaid ex seamstress with a pension for violence. In the other, an insult to God with the breath to match. This will be over quickly. So don't you dare blink! I'm Loïc Bramoulet, art and film director from France. And here I will break down the process I used to create the Nightmare Hunter short film for Reillusion using their Character Creator 4 and Iclone 8 toolsets, along other tools I traditionally use like Blender, 3D Coat and After Effects. But first, for presentation, here's a quick peek at my usual work. The first step was to quickly explore a few different options directly with storyboards uh, as it's a simple way to define nearly all aspects of a film at once the narration, the setting, characters, action, lighting uh, and the mood This is the most critical part as the, there is these little sketches made in a few minutes will determine the whole film produced over the course of a couple months so after testing a few different settings and combining them, we locked on, on a Victorian setting with a hunter and its monstrous prey. My idea was to, to change myself and see how far a character from CC4 could be pushed toward a nearly non-anthropomorphic one with a long face and still be able to receive facial motion capture from Icon 8. The second step for pre-production was getting a more precise idea of the final look and style uh, of the characters and environment. Uh, I did these two characters to have some elements to play with and end up, ended up uh, mixing them to keep the most interesting parts. At that stage I already did some test directly in 3D for the environment because I, I needed to find a, a technical solution to produce it fast so I, I couldn't rely on designing everything from scratch in 2D so I bought some assets online that I painted over directly in 3D and modified some free PBR texture in Photoshop and Blender to merge everything in a similar graphic novel style To create the characters, I started from basic ones in Character Creator, tweaking the base anatomy thanks to the morph bank, and adding some basic reference clauses. I used the headshot plugin and a more precise concept art to define a first version of the face. I then exported to Blender thanks to the CC3 add-on. From there, I also used 3D Coat to model and texture everything. To export back your character, check that all custom objects that you created are correctly skinned onto your armature. You can then select the armature and click Export in the Blender add-on. In Character Creator, instead of the usual import, you can go to Plugins, Blender Auto Setup, Import from Blender. You will be able to check if each object is recognized correctly and change its type if it's not. For example, here I can say the jacket is actually part of the clothes. If some custom materials you added are missing some textures, you can simply select the mesh, go to the material tab and fix any issue easily, for example setting the materials to PBR and assigning your roughness texture.
In iClone, I used the Motion Live plugin to connect to Neuton's Perception Neuron 3 mockup suit and recorded the motion capture directly on the characters. The added support for the Space Mouse is great news for anyone wanting to speed up their workflow as moving around in 3D can be really important during animation, so the 6 degrees of freedom of the Space Mouse uh, gives you the feeling of being physically present inside the 3D scene as you move around effortlessly. And here I'm using a Space Mouse, so I'm able to control the camera directly in 3D, and I can position it wherever I want without touching the keyboard or mouse. The majority of the work is then to edit and polish this capture with iClone toolset to make it match exactly our needs. A good example of that is the second shot of the film where I couldn't match the 3D stairs during motion capture in my living room, so I edited them in thanks to the motion direction control, animation layers and motion correction. Motion direction control can be accessed by right-clicking on a clip or via the toolbar on the timeline. You can then place your animation in the 3D space and break your clip to assign a different direction on each part. iClone 8 features also a new bidirectional fade between clips that allows for smooth and natural transition between them. Another handy new feature of iClone 8 is the motion correction that allows you to select some limbs and print their contact points in the 3D space so you can then transform, move and rotate these footprints to adjust the exact location where the contact happens with the ground. Pay attention to the threshold setting, higher values will detect more contacts and lock the contacts for longer, but you can always access the timing of this contact in the reach target section of your character animation in the timeline. Clicking on each tip allows to activate fade in or out for the snapping to be smoother. The motion modifier function, uh, just below the two others in the right-click menu, allows to shift the overall posture of the clip. For the shot 4, I was able to quickly mock up the action using pre-made motion capture clips from Actor Core that features a wide range of commonly useful and high-quality motions. The ability in iClone 8 with motion direction control to transform a wall animation clip in relation to other ones is also really handy to quickly assemble a custom sequence of actions. You can automatically assign a limb that will be snapped onto its position in the previous clip so they blend perfectly, or adjust its orientation to suit your environment. This process also allowed me to work on body and facial independently, so I left the facial animation for once the body animation was nearly there, and used an iPad and Motion Live to motion capture a facial performance with lip sync while listening to the voice to be synchronized. To edit the facial animation, you can open the face key menu here. Controls are separated into different categories. Face, where you can edit the head rotation and have an overall control on the expression. Then you have the eyes, mouth and tongue, where you can have a much thinner control over precise morph. For example, changing the eyes direction. But the most important thing here is to polish the lip sync from the motion capture, with the jaw control here and mouth open and close just below. The objective here is to accentuate and add character to the performance, so we can listen to the recorded voice and detect the moments where the lips should be closed, where specific mouth shapes should be more accentuated, like the O and the M sound, that we can produce by selecting the corresponding mouth type here and then moving the lips into that shape. Breaking the symmetry with the split lips option can go a long way to break the uncanny valley and add something more imperfect and human to the character expression. Once the animation was mostly there, I started to light the things to see how the film will finally look. The main light source is a powerful moonlight with cloud shadows 
that I painted as vertex color on the plane in the sky. So I was able to very precisely paint where the light will hit the character or not to improve the readability and add depth to the mood. The secondary lights are fires burning in the environment which allowed me to add the strong warm spotlights to contrast with the, the cold moonlight and strongly cut the character from the background. Once the first shots were lighted, I started to prepare the, scene, the scenes for rendering, adding a, a duplicated linked scene for each shot to render volumetrics in EV, while the main scene was rendering in cycles. Uh, all passes, including Cryptomat and Denoise data, into two AXR sequences that I then denoised into inside another scene. This allows to reduce the render time dramatically, as the GPU does not have to wait the CPU to denoise each frame, uh, and the denoise is not done on the final image, uh, as this adds a lot of blur, but on each render pass that's used to recomposite the beauty render. So. I, so I can start the compositing in After Effects from the same image uh, that I see in Blender, except it was rendered much faster, as even with low sample count, the passes denoising managed to get a, a crisp final, final composite. Some shots were only 14 seconds per frame, for example, to render them. I also render everything in uh, Full HD, so uh, as I will be upscaling it to, to 4K uh, thanks to Topaz video um, at the very end after the compositing. One thing uh, adding a lot to the overall impression in compositing is exporting the 3D camera and some empty null objects from Blender with the export.gsx add-on. Uh, and importing that with, with file run script in After Effects to then be able to add 3D planes uh, of painted uh, fog or clouds um, masked with the Z depth. This allows to improve readability uh, to controlling where the eye should look and adds a lot of mood and style as there is not only 3D volumetric fog but also then hand painted one uh, that can be animated to simulate wind. Finally, I did another scene for each shot in my Blender file where I linked the characters and a few objects around them, so I could simulate raindrops and particles, setting the collection with all the, the object scenes in holdout, so only the raindrops were visible. Character Creator 4 and Iclone 8 reveal themselves as great additions to my pipeline for their flexibility and ease of use. From helping with previsualization by being able to create a wide variety of body shapes and bashing animation and motion capture clips together without the usual hassle of retargeting different animation sources that are at different positions in the 3D world, to speeding up greatly final character creation by skipping a lot of the repetitive ta technical tasks like topology, UVs, armature skinning, facial blend shape sculpting while still being able to fully customize all, all of this with traditional industry standard tools to keep uh, full control over the, the design and the other direction of your project. The new features of Character Creator will be a big help in streamlining facial expression customization for anthropomorphic characters and the increased number of morphs compatible with facial motion capture are definitely adding a, a lot of fidelity and control to character expressions. For the body animation, the new features of Icon 8 allows to more comfortably reach what you need by blending clips and animating over the result non-destructively thanks to animation layers. So that's about it, thanks. London, we present to you this evening's main entertainment. In one corner, an underpaid ex seamstress with a pension for violence. In the other, an insult to God, with the breath to match. This will be over quickly. So don't you dare blink! <laughs> 